Cheers, and welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Mike, Yo, Christy. Pamela is making her debut. Yay! Yay. Cheers. Matt. Cheers. <laughs> and John. Howdy. Uh, and I am not going to be uh, talking about a beer today. Uh, I've decided that I need to improve my health a little bit. So uh, that includes giving up drinking beer for a little while. So I'm drinking some ginger tea. But Matt's drinking beer. I am drinking beer tonight. It's Ale Smith's uh, .394. It's the batting average of Tony Gwynn, I believe. Um, 94, I think, was the year. It says on the back here. I believe that was it. Actually, anyway, yeah, it's a good beer. Um, I really like it. It's well-balanced Ale Smith. Good job, guys. It's a pale ale, right? It's a pale ale at uh, 6%. It's very clear. Uh, I actually haven't poured it in a glass, so I couldn't tell you the color of it, but I'm assuming it's pale from how clear it is. <laughs> and the name. I'll give him that. <laughs> um, I think it said that he want, he like helped design this or requested some recipe. I, I don't know. I may be butchering this. I know somebody else told me about it and recommended it, so it's very good. It was given to me by Ian. Thank you, Ian. Is it Oceanside Ale Smith? San Diego. Oh, okay. Uh, San Diego Ale Smith Brewery. Ale Smith Brewing Company. San Diego style. Pale it makes ale. sense if it's Tony Gwynn beer. <laughs> that does make sense, right? John, what are you drinking? Well, no surprises to the present company and those who may have watched before, but uh, Synergy Ginger Berry Kombucha is my fermented beverage of choice tonight. What flavor was it? Ginger bearing. So it's a little gingery, fruiting. Interesting. But Master Brew Kombucha, their ginger is out of the park. I just, they don't have it where I shop today, so. All right. What are you drinking, Pamela? Gone back to an old favorite, Stella Artois. Mm -hmm. Right on. Stella Artois. It's Belgian. Kind of like a menage so. Artois. So, 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 yes, but yes, in a glass. Similar. Well, things may result from drinking too much of it that could result, yeah, one thing may lead to another. Okay. Done by InBev. And I've got a Isogenics Ionics. It has full of what? Good stuff in it. But you only drink that at night or in the morning. I'm drinking it at night. Okay. <laughs> I do it at night. Because it's morning somewhere. Her day starts at nine. <laughs> I don't know, I just started this, so. And uh, I've got coconut water because Ooh. I got in an argument with gravity and the earth, so I'm <laughs> coconut water tonight. Yeah. That's fine. Cheers. It's pretty I damn good. I, you know, that. yeah, at, least, what at least you had fun. Though. Yeah, I do. Well, I don't at remember. You That's the problem. So. You appeared, <laughs> okay, you appeared to be having fun. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. I'm glad I know I was having fun. Yeah. At least your body had fun. <laughs> <laughs> And, it, and the, the best part is a fight with the ground, not someone else. See, that's yes. the key that thing. Yeah. Yes. non yeah. yeah. Right. You ever seen that movie, Back to the Future 3? <laughs> no. That's what happened? Yep. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> Woo. Uh, fun times. Wish I was there. <laughs> you got to attend more bacon parties. I forgot to ask oh, if there was video on there. Bacon party. Bacon party. Bacon party. If you've never been to a bacon party, go to one. If you're friends, if you are not in the San Diego, bacon parties. They're no friends of yours. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, no, know, I was gonna like, say they should host bacon parties. <laughs> I, don't know I, mean. I don't know. Okay, maybe maybe, maybe I'm, I went a little overboard. Find new maybe friends. Maybe I let yeah. went a little <laughs> overboard. Awesome. If, <laughs> if your friends don't host bacon parties, then do it yourself. There we go. They are Take a lot initiative. of fun. Yes. <laughs> Topic. So, uh, Matt, yes. what do you think? Are there any good cops? Oh, man. Steve's put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do. The topic tonight is cops, uh, discussing <laughs> cops. I'd like to start off with the whole federalization of the police force that I've heard. Oh, yeah. What yes. the hell is up with that? So, yeah, go ahead. 
I mean, I, you guys can go ahead. You guys both <laughs> sound like you had good opinions on this. <laughs> no, I, I concur. Like today, I, I don't do the news often, but today I did turn it on. We saw it was on somewhere. We were, uh, Cor and I were. Anyway, uh, yeah, exactly. It was talking about Ferguson and systemic racism, something of that nature. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, what an opportune time to run this story when when right the, the, the White House is making a push for, for, for you know, federal encroachment of uh, law enforcement. I mean, they could blame it on, you know, those racist municipal departments <laughs> that <laughs> need to be regulated from the big wow. boys, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's exactly and, what, what are they doing? I, 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 mean, I, I, I don't, don't watch the news, so what so, are they doing? So... But I want to develop that further, right? So, like, let's just say it is federalized. So it becomes like the Stasi where, like, you could have somebody from another portion of the country moved in here, right? So they're mm-hmm. divorced from any sense of community or whatever. It becomes easier for them to, you know, just... Uh, Shoot. Yeah. Be easier. Become clin- easier than clinical. it already is. Yeah. I didn't even think about that aspect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge aspect. I mean, look how many dictators did that. Yeah, I know it's not a new move when it comes right, to Right, yeah, state. it's nothing new, but I mean, it just that's the mechanics of it, right? We're going to nationalize William it. the Conqueror did that in 1066 <laughs> BC, <laughs> so. See? So they're just recycling their tactics. Well, well status tactics. Yeah. You know, status <laughs> But these, are, these yeah. are usually the uh, tactics they're using at, toward the end of regimes. Well, And when well, things are getting airy. Well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're going after the internet. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're going after, like, I'm hearing about an ammo ban. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of I stuff did. really seems to be going down. So lately. what did they do with the police force? I really I, again I didn't They're, hear what they executive Obama order. was saying he wants to uh, executive uh, federalize police forces. Basically, have to, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, federalize say local. Gestapo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes. I was thinking red coats myself, but true. same thing, right? <laughs> that was recently within the last few days. Yeah. Today is 24 years ago Rodney King incident. When he's oh, pulled wow, over really? for a random traffic oh stop. Huh. Yeah. The day this March was filmed, 3rd, not the day it was on YouTube. Right. We're scheduled because that's how it works on this channel. It, it's cool though. It's, I like the concept. Yeah. yeah Lots it, of content. In the last week, it has been or two weeks, whatever. It does, it does seem like there's been a lot of like uh, push for new federal encroachment. You know, the, when you said ammo, police, um, secret president of Chicago, secret president, president. Yeah, I have to Chicago. mention that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't yeah. forget that. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Taxation yeah. through executive order. Right, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. another one. Yeah. yeah. Definitely wait, 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 what's this? Yeah. You hear yeah. about this one? Just that one's new, I heard. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, uh, they're looking into it. seriously considering yes. uh, taxation through executive order. He's what does to, that mean? He's trying to see if like he can do it. taxing people... Yeah. By the order increase. of a pen of the yeah. president. Yeah. Yeah. And that oh, came, that, that came, <laughs> that came from his, uh, his press secretary. Yeah. Right, so it's, yeah. I mean, so like it's... He said he's very interested in it. When do we start busting out our brown coats? No, he said... <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, What's think, the brown coats? Uh, Nazi Germany. Firefly. Oh, the Sturm. Oh, yeah. The Sturm. Oh, yeah. the Sturm. Oh, no. I, I was actually thinking Firefly, not not history, but yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, 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 in Firefly, so. the rebels were called brown coats because yeah. they wore brown coats. Uh, so you think the opposite? I see. The rebels. And I was thinking of the the name escapes me. The German name is Sturmstaffel, whatever. The, the SS, not the SS, but the brown coats. Uh, brown shirts, something like that. Or was that Italy? I don't. No, can't no, remember. It, it's Hitler. Yeah. The Nazis. Uh, 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 there's a. So going back to, is are there any good cops? Oh, yeah. Um, we, we were talking about this a little bit before the pod, before the, the show, and I think you had a, a really good point. You think you could say all everything you said to me earlier? <laughs> You're not supposed to talk <laughs> verbatim, about it before. Verbatim, remember. <laughs> uh, in a nutshell, uh, my daughter and I pulled into... Uh, a pharmacy parking lot today and uh, saw uh, what was clearly a uh, you know, uh, working class man, dark color, uh, skin pigment, um, and uh, he was emptying out his car which had nothing but clearly working tools, extension cords, tile saw, things of this nature. Two police officers were there. and So uh, my daughter asked me, what are you doing, Daddy? I said, I'm watching them. Make sure they don't, don't beat this guy up. You know? Fair <laughs> I said, enough. I had my yeah. phone ready, but I made the comment to 
Steve that uh, in hindsight I wished I would have just had it up on the dashboard and let them know that uh, you know I was filming just just for just so that it was did known. they do anything to him? No, he looked at me and he knew I was waiting, but I don't think he put two and two together, or whatever, mm -hmm. until after the fact um, uh, when the wrecker showed up and the guy had his all his work tools on the you know in the parking lot, and I went up to him and I asked him if he had. Uh, someone picking him up, and uh, uh, he went to which he said he had someone coming. So, so, oh, so I didn't. Uh, we were waiting for that to happen. <laughs> so I didn't feel the need. <laughs> I didn't feel the need to. Uh, you can he's stick a log to save the day. <laughs> he's got the gloves. Don't let me disrupt the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is a fancy rocket fire. Another one over there. So, am I understanding he was there because his car was being towed, so he was taking well, his tools okay, out so because he would need them? Ultimately, I don't know what... Why were the cops there? I don't know what led to this, but when I went up to him, I went between the cops and uh, went and started a conversation with a guy. When I asked him if he needed a ride home, he's like, yeah, no, no I'm good. He's like, the, the car was impounded. Uh, it's worth 900 bucks. I had a $1,600 bill. And basically, they want the balance that the car only, the car's only worth 900. They want the balance or whatever. I don't know how he got the car out and what led to it being impounded, but essentially, it was, you know, shaking down a, a working man. You and know what I mean, right? The cops are there supporting the towing company, or this is Escondido. Yeah, they're just they're, marching. They're, they're marching they're orders. They're doing their you know, job. Yeah, they're they're shaking. They, yeah. Essentially, they just shake, shake the guy down. It's a racket. You know, is this yeah. Escondido? Yeah, this is, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. If you're talking about Escondido police and the towing company. <laughs> yeah. There's a relationship right there. Yeah, I remember. And you can find yeah. all the information on our website, Natural Rights Coalition. .org. Yeah, they, uh, they have a long history. I mean, Escondido at one point wanted to start their own tow company, obviously, well, because their <laughs> whole extortion racket was working so well for them. Uh, I mean, that's what the whole checkpoints are all about, and that's all that all that stuff all relates to extortion money through towing and impound fees. Of course, I work uh, protesting the checkpoints, and the checkpoint uh, text messages has really eaten into their their ability to steal cars. Yes, I I, I got some pretty interesting looks from them when you know this gray-haired white guy getting out of a white European wagon goes over and, you know, violates my my station <laughs> to go and see how this brown working man was. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was a good conversation. That was it was interesting. But uh, you know, the the city uh, having their little cut of like the the tow fee and all that. I mean, a lot of cities do that. But yeah, I mean, definitely Escondido does that. I remember. Oh, the city has a cut of the tow. Yeah, they yeah, pay yeah, them yeah. Four hundred thousand dollars or so. Yep. The tow companies give the Escondido for the contracts for the checkpoints. Oh yeah, and it'll say it right at the tow yard when you take it out too. It'll say like what all the fees go to, and it'll say yeah, like. As a matter of fact, if you get city. your car towed by Escondido Police Department, it's a different fee, a different price than if you get it towed by the sheriffs. Hmm. Got some sort of deal. And why is that? Because of the deal they have with the. <laughs> yeah, it's like because. It, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's okay. But it's a I different extortion that. fee. <laughs> I remember this is Florida, but I wrecked a car and I was told uh, by another guy who just said came up to see how I was doing. He's like, uh, the record was already there, and it was the one on rotation for Florida Highway, but for the contract, and their fees were higher than if I just waited for someone who wasn't on contract. You know, sort of like a, sort of like whether you're paying for, you know, you go to the auto body shop, are you insured or not? And they give you the insured price, which is way higher than, say, if you're going to pay a cash deal. Yeah. Right? So, kind of a profit. similar situation. I got my truck towed. Uh, it broke down in Valley Center, actually, uh, once. And uh, before I could get back to it, they had towed it. And when I went to pick it up at the tow yard, they had a little chart. That and they looked okay. It was it was Valley. It was uh, I remember who towed it, but it was like they they looked at all the different. E they had a list of agencies and a list of prices oh, wow. based on what what uh, who who made the call to have the vehicle towed. Yeah. 
I think the main moral <clears throat> issue behind police, though, is that it's immorally funded, as most government problems are. I think that's the most fundamental issue. Yeah, the most. No, maybe but I think issue. I think there's something to be said, and I think you mentioned this earlier about when you when you're taking orders, you're essentially farming out your decision making so to nice. another entity. And therefore, nothing you can do can be moral. Concur. And further, they'll almost always say, I'm just enforcing the law. I'm doing my job. Doing my job. Well, that didn't work for the Nazis for the Nure in the Nuremberg mm -hmm. trials. You know what I mean? So yeah, the like, Nuremberg excuse. Oh, we should be reminded of that. <coughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not going to work for you. Oxbrock is not enough. <laughs> is that... How you, is that is that what it is? Oxbrocken? Uh, um, Amsbrocken. Um, it's, it's, it's of course immoral for anybody to commit an immoral act by taking an order and doing so. Uh, just like it is perfectly moral to disobey an immoral law. If there's a law that's immoral, it is perfectly moral to disobey that law. And uh, Jefferson would say you're obligated to, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to go, if you want to... Doesn't mean you're not going to get I don't, Yeah. Up, I, don't, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go so far as to say you're obligated, because if there's a law that says you will drink a glass of, at least one glass of water a day... Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I but I, I think I understand where he's going <laughs> with it, but I, I understand what you're saying. Be like, well, you know, if there was a law to... That, if it's something you're silly. going to do anyway... Yeah. Yeah, but I, don't I guess I guess the point is not if, do it just because it's yeah. If there's some, if there's an immoral, uh, if the government forces there's a law that forces you to do something immoral, mm -hmm. I I think that may be a case where yeah you should definitely disobey that. And uh, you know you're saying earlier about you know farming out your 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 decision making to somebody else, but just by saying you're taking orders. You know, I mean, for, for so much of it, it's not even you're farming your decision-making out to somebody else. You're almost just doing it to a piece of paper that has words on it, you know. <laughs> well, the code says I'm supposed to do this. This person's obviously broke and has their rearview mirror taped on with duct tape. But uh, I have to take their car and therefore make them lose their job. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh... I think I do. I do have a question for you, though, Matt. Uh, because you said following an unjust order obviously would be immoral. Uh, could there be a good cop though that only only enforced the just laws, so to speak? I, I guess I guess you couldn't even say that there's just laws though because even if you arrest a murderer, let's say, the punishment is obviously not befitting the crime. So I, I, I think the the problem for this would be like we talked about earlier, first of all, it, the basis of how it is funded is immoral, so that's one big issue. Sure. But the act of um, say you're talking about specifically defending somebody from harm, I, I can't say that you're doing something wrong when you're doing something like that. But it, I, I look at police just like I look at anybody else. If you're committing an immoral act for whatever reason, uh, if you're harming somebody else, that's immoral. If you're helping somebody else, that it, that act is uh, completely moral. But, but getting your funding through taxation, that's not right, but... Uh, so, so depending on what action you're talking about, there, there, is it, is it moral for you to do something morally good, if if you could say that that exists, if you're told to do it though, are are you moral for following that order? If it's because yeah. I, I I wouldn't say you are. You're just I you're just following that. orders, right. so there's no that's... morality for you. I would I wouldn't say that that necessarily you because it's the action of somebody else that you're carrying out um, the action can still be moral but it's actually it may not be your action um, ju just like the action if it, uh, the order was immoral that that action could be immoral even if it's not yours you're just carrying it out for <laughs> somebody else you um, don't bear the ultimate see that in that case you the person who carries out the immoral order 
bears the ultimate responsibility yeah. for the action, right? So yeah, Adolf, totally. Adolf, Adolf yeah, Hitler completely, yeah. couldn't have killed a single Jew if somebody didn't listen. If he didn't to have him. a bunch yeah. of order followers mm-hmm. to do it for mm-hmm. him, as an example. I mean, unless he actually did it himself, but. That's a different story. Yeah, like, I mean, so, I, I, I think when, you know, when I've... There's no way you could have killed 6 million or Exactly, million the numbers people. do it, yeah, right. right. Maybe you could have done... Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 1,500, I don't know. Yeah. The, the interactions I've had with law enforcement, I, uh, you know, I don't sit there and, you know, I don't, well, I'm not, if I'm talking to the, 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 the person with a badge and all that, I don't sit there and go, you know, Damn, damn you, Governor! You know, I like I, you know, I don't care about that. There is an individual telling me that unless I do this, he's going to do this, or this is going to happen to me, and that's you got to have empathy in that yeah, situation. Yeah, you got to put it in their shoes mm-hmm. and say, hey, you know, this guy's, this guy's in a hard position. He makes his money through this. Like, mm-hmm. there, he he may at this point he may just be doing it for the money. There, there's a lot of different circumstances, and you have to give humans. I don't know. I people make mistakes and. But you got to deal with, on, with people empathetically. You, you gotta yeah, be, never. I think to that even applies to cops and other oh, absolutely. other thugs too. Uh, it may not work every time, but dealing with them empathetically will definitely help you more than it'll hurt you. It's interesting how over time it's getting better, uh, but and they'll often go away thinking that or. or uh, with something to think about. Sorry, I didn't mean to end No, but it's getting better in a sense that uh, early in the days when more when people were filming cops, uh, the cops would just outright bully them and tell them they couldn't film them, right? And uh, now you've got lots of film of police officers, you know, completely accepting of the camera, and uh, I'm sure that's because a lot of cops have had their asses handed to them when they get Got back sued right, and, absolutely yeah, right yeah. so not not to make a case of them being moral or moral or this or that and just saying that at least in that respect uh, things are getting better because more and more people are filming them this should definitely be said film the police yeah, yeah. Film the police. <laughs> right. yeah something interesting uh-huh. yeah. the video we've all seen about putting your documentation in a ziplock and hanging it outside oh, yeah. your window yeah. Yeah. Right. I asked if I would yeah. do that so any of you would you be willing to do that I've had them give me a hard time for not rolling down a window. Did you have your documentation in the back outside the window for them to access? No, I did not try that specifically. Mm. But there's a video from Escondido of uh, Daniel Alfaro is his name. Mm. They broke his window. They said like a few words to him. They they ordered him to roll the window down. They refused. And they pretty much broke their window like within Yeah, I've never seen that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But he also like said... Something. He egged they, it on a little bit, right? Like it didn't even break my window. Yeah, he we said were doing. Like, go ahead we were doing yeah, the checkpoint. Like we were doing the checkpoint protests at that time, and I really wish it would. I would have known about this. Yeah. Uh, so we could have recorded the whole. And and maybe, coached him a little bit yeah. before he went through with it. But I, I, I mean, I, I I had something similar, so I mean, I understand. They didn't break my window though, so. So I don't think the other guy in the car with him even knew really what to do. Yeah, it was. Based I mean, on the it, it video. was. Uh, it's something that I'm sure isn't easy to uh, prepare for. Like you know, it's, and, and it, you know, I'm sure no people, nobody really <clears throat> breathes a sigh of relief when they have a cop following them. Right. Yeah. And ask anybody. Like know. I don't care how clean you are. There's so many laws out there that you're breaking. <laughs> exactly. One of them. And, and definitely not a good idea to provoke somebody who has aggressive tendencies and has <laughs> weapons on them. You know, and will get I mean, away with just, murdering you. Yeah, so don't, you know, don't sit there and start egging them on because they might just do exactly what you say, you know? Yeah. Well, it's all about peaceful interaction anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, wouldn't that be They've nice? They've been programmed. <laughs> uh, the program they're running right now is basically us versus them, right? Yeah. Like, Everything's about their safety. Uh, you can even see like cars used to have say protect and serve on them, but it's been gone to the highest court in the land, and they said the court said that there's no obligation for the for the police to protect, right? Okay. So then why are we funding, you know, uh, these municipal police departments or otherwise? But uh, yeah, anyway, it's, it's uh, they're not. They're stealing 
money yeah. from us. Right, and, right. And, and, but that, that should be the question to why the people are we who are still... I mean, look at California, willfully. for instance. Yeah. Uh, they don't allow you to uh, carry a means of self-defense, like a, a legitimate means of self-defense, such as a firearm. Or a uh, knife has to be under, like, what is it, four yeah, inches four or something inches. like that? You know, so, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's real easy when they put all the competition out of business, <laughs> right? <laughs> But uh, you, you mentioned the, uh, the the court case about you know uh, what they have to do. Uh, it was specifically there's there's one for actually every almost every state in the union of of pretty much saying the same thing. But the one specifically in California is uh, Salza versus the city of Antioch. And what the what the judge actually says is that the police are not legally obligated to do anything. Quote unquote. <laughs> they are not legally obligated to do anything. <laughs> So that's the what's the thing I always remember about them? Like not a damn thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, well, what I find interesting too, and this is just a little bit off topic, but Wes was here last week, right? And uh, when he still lived here, he'd gotten a ticket for running a stop sign. Right. I actually got the ticket for the stop sign he didn't run, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, went to court. And while at, in court, and this is all on on. Uh, this is all recorded and on the internet. Mm -hmm. The judge, ju he asked the judge, "How is this different from extortion?" And the judge says, "I don't know. Maybe I am extorting you." <sighs> Every so, now and then they're honest, right? <laughs> just like the incident. Yeah, that was a good engagement because he, yeah. he uh, the judge was entertaining the, the line in the victory, yeah. and, and yeah. there was a good, you know, dialogue that was recorded. It's pretty good. I didn't. That's actually. That's. You can listen to that somewhere? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. legit. I want to hear that. I'll see if I can find it for you. Sounds good. What if we just ended the monopoly on force? That would be awesome. Well, <laughs> in short, that would be awesome. That, that's the goal, like, right? Yeah, this does well, tie into the, like... I, uh, I think the, the ultimate goal is to have no force. Yeah, but absolutely. Peaceful interaction. I don't know if... Yeah, I don't know if that will ever be actually accomplished. We should probably speak to... But, yeah, definitely stopping the... The monopoly on force is right. goal number one. <laughs> so that speaks to like what we should probably talk about long term, the idea of there not being municipal police in the, in the sense that we have now. It would be, uh, it would be private, you know, you have security for this piece of property and you could have uh, investigative services, you know, a private eye, something like that. So. Technically, the police as we know it isn't necessary. It's the model that we're yeah. all used mm -hmm. to isn't even I mean, you could essential. Even, There's I mean, nothing that can't be done privately. I think self-defense is another big thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, with everybody having uh, different technology, you could have... Video cameras. It, 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 I mean, at some point, I'm sure there's going to be some wearable technology with a camera on it. Uh, Google glasses. You, well, but it, but uh, well, I mean, something that... I, I don't know exactly what it'll be, but something that you could, instead of... Uh, if you do have some sort of altercation, you could refer. Hey, I have a video of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm sure I, it would. I would want something like that to be encrypted and handled, you know, by me. And I, I would be the one who could, you know, enter that in Devons and everything. But I, I think that I don't know. There, it'd be nice to have uh, better means of self-defense. But I, I do think that peaceful interaction is ultimately the goal. I mean. Is the goal now really is handle things as peacefully as possible? Yeah, how can we stay out of um, altercations? Yeah, there's yeah. there's no reason for violence. Yeah, that, that, yeah with all the technology and all the ideas we've come up with over all of human history, I think we're past that. But it's an educational process, least. though. I, yeah. I, even with you know those who who believe that they are good communicators, it's still an educational process to actually thwart. Something. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, we, we, we're not there yet, I don't think, as a, a communication yeah. culture. So, if we had a society to where, like, there's. I'm know, not there yet. There's, so. I'm not there yet. <laughs> if we have a society to where there's, like, you know, just the private security, right? And if they were to, like, go around a corner and somebody was having sex with, like, a robot, would that, would that like, how, how did the situation be handled? Is banned in this society? Well, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think First so. First of all, robot prostitution be completely illegal. illegal in this society. And how do you pay the robot prostitute? Wait, that, now that's getting confusing. <laughs> well, and it's like credit card slot. Public nudity. <laughs> public nudity, uh, cool, not the, cool for the, robots. The robots would be programmed with like a pleasure program, and so uh -huh. the payment right. is uh -huh. 
copulating with the robot, right? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. It's getting complicated, but I can maybe oh, see no, it. Oh, no. Timer, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, we're out of time. Next week. Next week. Or maybe right. next week. I don't want to promise that. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.